Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to another Facebook Live on Bridges of Light International. I'm going to wait a few moments or a few minutes just to make sure that um, some of us are here. <clears throat> and uh, this evening we are going to uh, as always, we are going to um, inquire, discuss, and share um, something about what is the truth behind victims and perpetrators. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few more people to join, and then I would like all of us to start with a... Um, I wouldn't even call it a meditation as such, but um, it's more of an exercise to, um, to stimulate our level of presence. But before we start, thank you very much for being here. And also I want to thank you, uh, to thank everybody that is going to um, watch the live whenever, later on this evening, tomorrow, or whenever in days or weeks to come. I am thrilled to be in this group and uh, excited, happy and honored to be able to share all this knowledge, this awareness with you. But um, more than anything, I am excited um, of the fact, and it is a fact, that we are all globally raising the vibrational level of humanity and I truly feel that now more than ever it is something uh, valuable something that we can and everybody the whole universe can benefit from so thank you very much hello Mariella good evening to you too and yes please start writing uh, I personally don't really like to to talk without interaction um, okay, let's start by focusing primarily on what we perceive with our physical senses. One of the most effective ways to center ourselves and to slow our thinking process, so to get to a meditative state, to be more present, is to simply start following, listening to our breath, our breathing. And if for some of you is uh, the concept of listening to the breathing doesn't resonate, you can control it. In other words, um, do intentionally a couple of really deep long breath like this that's it if you do this properly your thinking process has to slow down when we truly uh, focus on our breathing we cannot Think at the same time and while we notice our breath, breathing I invite you to also pay attention more than what you were before to what you're perceiving with your eyes I am looking at the camera uh, imagining which is not just an imagination I am pretty convinced that I can also feel everybody who's on the other side so while I look at the camera, I also pay attention intentionally, and this is always the key word, to choose intentionally to notice something that is not what I am exactly focusing upon. Like I'm looking at, I see there's a computer on this side, there's a telephone, there's a bottle of water, there's some lights, there's a window, there's a, a chair, there's an alarm clock. In other words, there are things at the periphery of our visual field 
that unless we intentionally choose to notice, it is as if they weren't there. We are not aware of it. This is important because we are training our awareness, our consciousness, to notice something that we were ignoring before, but also we are choosing to distribute our attention and our physical energy where we want it to go. And we are, sub we are detract detracting energy from the thinking processes that they would use the same finite amount of physical energy. And also, when you focus on something in particular, paying attention to it, but at the same time, you are noticing, you're not concentrating fully on one thing at the expense of everything else. When you're still paying attention to what is at the periphery, you develop a very, very, very useful abilities. You start learning how to gaze. Gazing is um, what everybody that is very intuitive, all the sensitive people, uh, I believe mediums and psychics, that's what they do. They're very good at gazing, meaning they can be on different kind of um, reality and state of consciousness at the same time. They're very in, in here, focused on one thing, but at the same time, they are not oblivious to what is somewhere else. That's why, uh, very quickly, they can get impressions and images when they're working with somebody on in-life situations. It's almost as if they're reading the old field. Life is always <clears throat> giving us information. And of course, it's great to focus on something in particular, but since the universe is holographic, if we can also keep an eye for something else, we get more information. Anyway, I'm not gonna go on and on about this. We can maybe do a, another live regarding this, but this is just to say that we can be here focusing on what we want to focus, but at the same time, notice everything else. While we keep doing this, hello, hello Havala. When we keep doing that, Hello Valeria, how are you? <laughs> when we keep doing that, we also pay more attention to how much attention we were paying before, to what we perceive, we feel with our body. The cloth on our skin, magically, it is for me now, but I guess also for you if you're sitting down, magically a chair has now appeared under your bum, the floor underneath your feet. Then also pay attention to what you are perceiving with your ears. Hello, Vali. Any sounds, of course, the sound of my voice, but you may notice other sounds that they were there before, but you were not aware of it unless you choose to become aware of it. Then can you taste anything? Have you get, got any aromas in your mouth? Can you smell anything? And then we, if we want to take this a step farther, we use what is called the sixth sense, which I truly believe is just as real as, as any other senses. And how do we do that? We go, while we keep notice and paying attention to what we perceive physically, we also pay attention to how we feel inside. Any emotions, any sensations, any images. In other words, any impressions that they might come to us, but we, we know that they're not rational, they're not memories, they're not projections. They're literally something that we are receiving. And why that happen? That could happen because we are more in the present, more in our bodies, and our body has a direct link with our essence, our soul, our spirit. So very simple, yet I believe very, very powerful thing to do. And as always, I invite you to consider this not just an exercise uh, that we are doing here, but something that you're going to be doing now and forever, unless you're already do it, doing it. And there may be time, of course, you forget, you, you, you maybe find yourself lost in your thoughts, maybe worrying. When you remember, simply bring yourself back to what you perceive with your senses. 
and you then center yourself again. Hello, Danielina. Hello. Now, let's talk about victim and perpetrators and what are the hidden dynamics behind it. Who is a victim? A victim is someone that um, to which, to whom, something has happened uh, and he or she was not looking for this happening and he got hurt, could be emotionally, could be physically, maybe he had an accident, maybe somebody did something to him or her. That's the victim. The perpetrator is the other part of this dynamic. Uh, it's someone that inflicted some harm, which could be psychological, emotional, or both, or even physical, to someone else. Or it could be um, an, an economic system, or a political system, or a cultural system that has inflicted some kind of harm or pain into someone else or another group. Right. Let's consider something. Objectively, uh, victims and perpetrators exist while the act, the, the harmful act, is taking place. Hello, Evelyn. Great to see you here. Hello, Alessia. While the, 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 the abuse, the attack, is taking place, definitely yes. An observer can definitely say yes, he or she or them are the victims in this context and he or she or them are the perpetrators. Okay. The dynamics and the reality changes when after the, the act has been uh, completed, let's say it was a robbery, okay, maybe somebody stole something to somebody else or attacked him or her or them physically. After the attack, there is a period when there is a, hello Julia, there is a burst of emotions, which of course are not nice emotions, from the victims. And also the, the, the perpetrators, probably they are releasing anger. Now, the span of life of a organic, natural, and I'll tell you what I mean by organic and natural, emotion, it's very, very short. Very, very short. It could be minutes, it could be hours, and then the emotion fades. Now, when the emotion fades, uh, this is all unconscious, by the way. Normally, what we are trained unconsciously used to do, we remuginate, we tell something ourselves, we tell ourselves something about what has happened, and we prolonged the suffering. In other words, if someone stole my wallet now, today, I may get angry, and it's all normal and natural. But if in three weeks' time I am still suffering because my wallet was stolen three weeks ago, now, I am a victim not anymore because of what the perpetrator did, but I become, I am still a victim, yeah. But the, the real perpetrators is my mindset. It's that it's got nothing to do with who we called perpetrators. Because the perpetrators, in fact, in three weeks after the event, could have actually became a saint, could have <laughs> woken up spiritually, it could have not existed anymore, but if it still existed in our head and in our emotional response, in our psychic and emotional arena, we, we are the one doing it. We are the one creating the suffering still. And this is important. Why? Because when we understand this, we can then understand that we have the power to, thank you, Avalo, to let it go. Exactly. Exactly. We have the power to forget about it. Uh, in fact, animals, and I like also to relate them to children, to kids, know this and do that automatically. 
Uh, think of cats or dogs, because I think we've all seen them. They may be playing and then something happens and they, they may be barking to each other. Maybe they... Oh, the audio is low. I don't know if I can do something about it. Can you hear me? I'm trying to speak a bit louder. If not, tell me and I'll see if I can I'll put the headsets on. Um, but let me know if you hear me now. Anyway, cats and dogs, they may get upset. They may bark to each other. They may even bite each other. But soon after, they, they, they go back into a sort of calmness and an equilibrium and they forget about it. Kids do the same. Thank you. Kids uh, argue and then normally nobody has to tell them anything. They instinctively go and they make peace. They make friends again and they forget about it. Until, until an adult comes in the, 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 the scene and normally it could be, but this, by the way, it's all out of love. Maybe it's the parent of one of the kids. Or, uh, or anybody else, Elona Lisa, and tells one of the kids that they believe, that the, the adult believe it's the victims of the situation, and tells him or her, are you stupid or what? You should not allow them to treat you like that. You are better than that. Now, for, the ki for kids, it's very difficult to understand this. I've seen kids in this situation. It's a very... Um, uh, elaborate cognitive process for the kids to understand what are you talking about stupid I should have them to pay back what they did but they learned to me that is um, what we call or original sin a child it's a, a divine entity it's pure it's innocent but when we adults teach them about good and bad. Right? Hello, May. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, May. Um, when we tell them what is good, we teach them what is bad, what is right and what is wrong, who is stupid and who is clever, and how they should be treated or not and treat other people, we are, in my opinion, by the way, only, <laughs> we are um, psychically and emotionally raping them. They were pure and now they haven't, they're not pure anymore. Now they've been violated. And then they, yes, we teach them dualism, Evelo, absolutely. Exactly. We teach them dualism uh, and we teach them uh, how to suffer. We teach them what I regard it to be the seed of all suffering. We teach them how to judge. To me, judging is... The one thing, you're welcome, mate. If the one thing that we do, that because we believe it's necessary, that if we didn't do, we would always leave it ease. And that is judging. Because when we judge, we inflict psychic pain to what we believe to be the, the perpetrators, because psychically we say, you are a... Uh, terrible person or whatever we judge them to be we and, and psychically if we could see that it literally is an attack but since they are a part of us they are a projection of us we are attacking ourselves that's why uh, somebody could be could have been a victim and they really were a victim of something that happened to them maybe years ago but they haven't let go yet and what they do, they're still so locked in their negative judgments about what has happened. And they have, by the way, there's nothing negative in this. It's just that the way they've been conditioned and trained, like we have all culturally been conditioned and trained. Put on the news. Look at how politicians talk to each other. Oh, it's incredible. It's one judgment after another, after another. But judgment, if we could see it, I mean, faults are potentials. Every time they judge somebody negatively, oh my gosh, I'm stabbing them. It's a psychic attack and I'm stabbing myself. So of course, we'll never get over this uh, victims and perpetrator cycle. But going back to the victim, maybe the victim is somebody that is vegan, that wouldn't actually kill a fly, uh, and maybe prays, maybe meditates, uh, maybe it, it's Buddhist, but is suffering. Because in their own intimate head, they are full of judgment. But they are victims of their, of their 
thinking. Uh, we'll come to the rapist. Uh, thanks, everyone. So, but people then, what do they ask? Rightly so. They say, but I need to judge. We need to judge. Because otherwise, we wouldn't know how to behave and what to do. And some people think every be, everything would go uh, astray if we didn't judge. I truly do not think so. Why? Because our ego, our mind, our human race consciousness system is based on judgment. Yes, good and bad, right and wrong. Which, by the way, has not been chosen by us. It's been chosen by outs the outside entity, system and culture. But there's something that our essence, our soul, our spirit, call it whatever you want, does, and it is what kids, children do that. They discern. The mind, the ego, the human part of us, because we are human beings, we are human, cultural, trained, educated, but also we are beings, we have pure consciousness, we have infinite potentials. We are spirit. The human judges. The being discerns. What does it mean discerning? The, me, the being feels. Feels. But that's why I, I always try to, to start something, a session or a meeting, centering in how, what we perceive with our bodies. Because our bodies is always telling us what is the truth in every any given moment, our own inner truth. Our body instinctively tell us go towards something or move away from something. And that doesn't mean that what I'm moving towards or away from is good or bad, right or wrong. No, 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 no. That simply means that in that moment in time, I don't feel like going forward or I feel like going backward. In other words, the, the soul, the essence, the person might like preferring one moment chocolate or strawberry or mint, and that's not doesn't mean the strawberry, chocolate, or mint are better or worse, okay? But we are trained of asking ourselves and following this, the answer to this question. Is this right or wrong, good or bad? But sometimes, and this is when people suffer, when I work with people, the, the situation or the person could be different, but the, the underlying dynamic, it's always the same one. The essence of that person, their soul, would like to express itself in an authentic, original way. But the human conditioned, trained part, full of right and wrong, good and bad, does not allow it. I call them the psychic cage. One advice that I always give people, and I give it to you now, is instead of just asking yourself, and why not keep asking yourself this question? Is this right or wrong? Ask yourself also these questions. How do I feel about this? And this, listen, then listen to your body. Do I like it or not? And then feel and decide. How many times, but you tell me, have you been, I've been there many times, in a situation when you had the nudge, you knew inside of you, maybe it wasn't something very strong and powerful, but something told you, mm, get away or, or, or go towards a situation or a person or whatever. But sooner than later, I told myself, mm, well, actually, uh, she or he is not too bad, or oh, this is a great opportunity. And I took myself in the situation or out the situation going totally opposite to what my inner gut feeling used to tell me, my instinct, only to find myself maybe farther on in time telling myself, ah, if I had only listened to that nut. And I believe, by the way, if I haven't said before to, to you during the live in English, everything that comes out from this mouth, it's no more no less than my opinion uh, based on my life experiences and what I know or I think I know. I'm not saying it's the truth, but I always invite people to put it to the test 
and then let me know if it works for you or not. But why this happened? This happened because when we were kids, to be educated, they had to tell us, uh, for example, Luca, it's not important now what you feel and what you would like to do. This is considered to be wrong and you don't do it and you must not like it. This is considered to be right and you do it and you like it. So we start not honoring anymore how we feel, what we believe, and we learn, and I repeat, we learn how to honor what other people feel and believe. Okay, and then we go back to uh, victims and perpetrators. I've spoken too much, let me read now. Yes, Avalon is, is feeling, um, is saying, Avalon, how do you act with a rapist? No punishment? Fantastic, fantastic question. We are going into the <laughs> raw liveness of it. Okay. Now, to come from a pl place of, okay, let's, let's analyze this. The person that we call a rapist, it is, of course, during the act, a um, perpetrator. And who has been raped is a victim. No questions about it. Okay. Now, the way we are thinking and the way we observe what we call reality, it's very limited and it's very linear. I'll tell you something. Uh, well, that, this I have to tell you later. What we think to be the cause of something, meaning we think that the rapist is the cause of the upset of who's been raped. Okay, we think that A causes B and that's it. No, no. But we, our rational mind, thinks linearly because we, we, the alphabet is uh, A, B, C, D, the numbers are one, two, everything is almost linear and from down to up. Anyway, it's, it's, it's structured in a certain way. But reality, biologically, organically, and even mentally, if we want to look at it, and I invite you, I will always invite you to look at things in a broader perspective, the systemic view of reality, because everything is a system, it's very complex. But in this, in this scenario, what does it mean? It means that who we call to be a rapist, the perpetrator, he is already a victim or something else. More often than not, the, the, the rapist is either somebody who was abused himself or herself when he or she was a kid, or if, he's, if he wasn't abused physically and sexually, it was definitely, I can assure you, and this is mathematic, this is, this is it's reality. He was abused in some way or another. So he or she is a victim or something physical or something mental. By the way, we are all very much victims of our own mental conditioning. Every time we suffer, every time we get angry, we are victims of a negative conditioning. That we like it or not. But let's stay with the rapist. The reality is that A does something to B, but A is already the, 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 the cause, I mean the effect of something else, because again, this is reality, the universe is infinite. We cannot divide the universe infinitely in the smaller, getting to an end. I know it's mind blowing, but that is the reality. Everything is infinitely, can, could be infinitely small, and also we don't know the edges of the universe because Supposedly, it's infinitely large. So that means that everything is infinite. So the causes of something, they, we can never trace them back far enough. But we always see in the snapshot, we see a piece of a huge puzzle. So the perpetrator is already a victim. It's important. Why is it important? For us not to get mad at him, to understand. Because when we understand that he is a victim, what we can do, we can then uh, do something very effective, which is not to get angry. Okay, all I am here for in this life from now on is dedicate myself to the expansion of consciousness, of myself, of course, it's never ending the journey, I haven't got anywhere, <laughs> um, and others, help others to live always more peacefully and, and happily. Although, if we want to eradicate perpetrators from the planet, and so having no more victims, the only thing that we really have to do, which is the only powerful thing, is to eradicate them from our own consciousness, our own mind, our own emotional awareness. 
Why do I say that? Because everything that is happening and we see in this physical reality, everything that is physical, but as everything, is that this is the product of this glass is the product of a fault. Faults are potential, but then they become thin and they materialize. But everything that we consider to be a cause, let's say a perpetrator here, it is always already an effect. An effect of what? An effect of our own consciousness. In other words, what we think is a cause here, it's an effect of our consciousness. If I believe that in the world, like everyone was saying, duality, if I believe in duality, I believe that it's me against you, them against us, and we fuel a vicious, vicious circle. That's why I am, if we want to stop this visual circle, circle uh, the only, and again, I am not coming from a moralistic point of view. I couldn't care less about ethics and morals, really. <laughs> but I care about what works and what not. If you tell me that you want to get from A to B, I tell you how to get from A to B. If you want drama in your life, if you want to be a victim or a perpetrator, I am the first telling you, do whatever you want to keep doing it. I was one of them <laughs> up to 2002, and I know what it's like. Now I choose something different. But again, to choose peace and to choose not to see perpetrators anymore, I have to be able to truly, and I mean truly, understand what's going on, what's the dynamic behind, and I have to be at peace. This is very difficult, easier said than done, eh? of course. I mean, go and say this to somebody that's been raped or that their kids has been raped, absolutely. We'll get to that later. Everything has its place. Although, until we get angry, when let's say we know that somebody has been raping somebody else, our anger, it's already going out in the field, it's vibrating, it's a vibra it's a, it literally a physical vibration, and you know what happens? That maybe other people are stable and strong, gish, like us, is not affected so much, but somebody weak, like the, the, um, the rapist, because he's weak, is going to be acting on our anger and we, put, put, we, we continue this cycle. Now, if we want to put out the fire, we have to use water. And what is water? In what we're talking about is peace, is love, is understanding. So, when there's a rapist and a victim, of course, absolutely, lots of love and compassion for the victim and the family of the victim. But who may actually need more love? Who maybe has had less love and understanding and a harder life? I think it is always the perpetrators, not always, but it definitely perpetrators. They do what they do because they had such a strong negative conditioning such such a uh, such a hard life that the, the 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 anger that they have stored inside they release it against somebody else and also let's ask ourselves a very important question if we want to eliminate perpetrators what is the part that I am individually and us collectively playing because somebody does something like that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I mean. You know there are some cultures, not many because most of them they're being eliminated, unfortunately, by us, by, by Western cultures. But some cultures in some island, they had or they have no uh, pedophilia, no uh, sexual abuse, but they have no sexual taboos. Adolescents are uh, encouraged to express their sexuality. There's no taboos. So this is to say that if I am judgmental, if I have a taboo or a negative judgment about a sexual uh, orientation or a sexual expression of any kind, I am already, I am already fueling and contributing for somebody to become a rapist. It, this is 
uh, to me, it's, it's important to be aware of all this because we are a very complex system, but we are part of this system. I am literally, and I'm not just saying, I'm talking to an extension of myself. You are listening and seeing a projection, an extension of yourself. What I see outside is what I believe inside. Before 2002, I thought that life was terrible. I was seeing perpetrators everywhere. And I believed myself to be one of the biggest victims of the universe. Truly, truly. I was arguing very often. I used to have uh, my uh, car broken into often. I used to have car accident. I used to have my wallet stolen many times. Now, none, and I repeat, none of them happen. But why? Because I went to simply believe that they were, there were nasty, I was judging very much, my gosh, I was judging. The, the, I used to believe that there were nasty people on this earth and in the universe, and they were against me. It was them against me. Now, no, no. Now, I think we are all friends. And if somebody does something that I don't like, I tell myself, Okay, maybe, maybe I get upset at first, and then I, I oh, wake up and say, look out, wake up, what are you doing? What, how, what are you doing to yourself to make yourself angry? And then I think, okay, that's a master. What is he pointing out to you? You see? Because we can go, we can choose to go from having a victim mentality to a, I like to call it, but not in an egotistic way, but it gives you the idea, an opportunistic or possibility kind of mentality, meaning... Uh, where before I was seeing problems and challenging challenges, now I see opportunity of growth. Of course, not always easy. Sometimes it's easier said than done. But when we are in a state of peace, it's very, very useful to psycho and emotionally educate ourselves about all this. Of course, it's a different story if we have to tell this to somebody that it is still in the first traumatic phase of an abuse then yes, then I wouldn't be telling them what I'm saying now because they, rightly so, would not be listening, would, they would not be aware of it, they would actually get angry at me and they would say, get away. <laughs> so what, I, what would I do? I would simply listen and have empathy for them and, and be with them. But going back, because I haven't actually answered your question, Evelo, how do you act with a rapist? Okay. I would still stop the abuse because when we come from a state of peace, it doesn't mean that I became a doormat. No, 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 no. But I not, I am not, I don't use anger. I use firmness. It, there is a big difference. People that are locked in the judgment, in fact, sometimes they can confuse my, for example, firmness, like I'm saying no, or I might say to you, if we were to deal in, in any way, shape or form, and if you did something that I don't like, I wouldn't be judging you now, but I would definitely, and I would definitely say, I don't like what you're doing, and you would feel it, you see, but that's not aggression, that is standing my ground, standing my boundaries, and that is important, because the human part of us, the systemic part of us, has to know the rules, and yes, in that realm, there is right and wrong, meaning a, a sexual abuse is something wrong. But I can stop the abuse, and I can be firm with the, the rapist or the, or the um, terrorist, let's say, and stop it and, and put it maybe somewhere where it's contained, but I'm not angry. Can you see? I'm not angry. I'm firm. But I know, and I actually feel compassion toward it. Okay, and then I would actually inquire in myself, and of course I could verbalize it, but we feel these things already. I would ask, how did, how did this person learn love? Because you know what? <laughs> I know it's hard to, to swallow this one, but every act, and everyone, everyone is an act of love. I truly believe that somebody that f gets lots of uh, bombs on himself and he explodes he wanted to do it to protect okay it could have been an idea 
it could be a religion, it could be a person, a population, but it was because he was angry. But why was he angry? Because he was fearful. Why was he fearful? Because he wanted to protect something or somebody. But this is to say, again, because if I put anger in already the tragedy that has happened, it's as if I put fuel on what is already burning. If I want that to stop, I have to really work on myself and understand that water and peace and love for everybody, it's what is needed. Otherwise, well, we will never stop this happening. Do I, does it make sense? In other words, I can stop the rapist. I can do it with anger and create more angry happenings. Or I can do it with firmness, but with peace. You see, in, in, in uh, uh, people say you can go at the, at the hurt, at the, in the center of the battle, you can go in, in war, into battle, but be at the center of the lotus or whatever it is. Meaning you can go and do what has to be done rightly, you know, because it is right for, for, for the highest good of everyone involved, and you're stopping somebody from doing that. But you do it from a centered space. You're not doing it with anger. Does it make sense? It's like um, uh, telling a kid that's done something wrong. If we say it while we are angry, of course, we may be stopping him or her from doing something harmful. But that anger, it's, it's still there. They feel it. And subconsciously, they are not learning because they feel, you are actually using anger on me. How can you expect me to behave peacefully when your energy is angry? You know, and you know schizophrenia, it's caused more than from biological happenings in the, in the brain, from all this, uh, it's called the double bind, or from all these um, conflicting messaging that culturally we give to each other. Maybe I'm angry with somebody and I tell them, oh, I like you very much, but that person feels it. So that's why I'm feeling, I'm, 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 that's why it is important if we actually want something to be peaceful, the world or whatever, we have to embody it. It's not easy. It's a lifetime job, but it's worth it. Sorry, okay, let's keep going. Avalor, I, I hope I answered your question and I hope I answered it in a, in a clear enough way. Avalor said then, gut feeling contraction, gut feeling contraction, relax. No, yes, yes. If when, when you are relaxed, when, you, he, when you're tuned in and listen to your gut feelings, yes, you can probably feel the yes or the no. May, the birthday girl, she say, yes, happened a lot in my life. We learn to trust the gut feelings. Yes, yes. And I know May very well. I work with her, actually, at the School of Metaphysics. And yes, she's amazing. She's, uh, she, yes. Well, your instinct is, 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 is change your life so much, drastically. I mean, it's fantastic. Evelo say, is a loop of action-reaction. Yes, it is, absolutely. For our mind, uh, it's always an action and reaction. Our mind works very much as a switch on and off, on and off. And unless and until we realize who we truly are, which is infinite potential, we are the master of the realm of our self. And the mind is our instrument. It's like an untrained dog that is running everywhere and it gets excited about whatever and reacts always in the same way. But we have to realize that we, I'm the master, so I'm gonna teach you to go and fetch the, the, the stick or do whatever else. But to do that, I have to be able not to work in a mind level anymore, which we can call it level good, bad, right or wrong, which is the level where it doesn't matter which polarity we assume, we would always have the will of the, the good and bad, right or wrong, to spin, meaning. And that's why I think they do it with all intention, but people that they, they, they embark on a fight against poverty or against crime or against whatever, yes, they do it out of love and there's no question about it. But it's, it's polarization. It's, they think I'm the good one. is minus polarity that wants to... Um, eliminate the, the, I mean, the plus polarity, let's say, because they think they're the good one, which they are, maybe yes, of course, and they want to eliminate the minus negative polarity. But what happens is that they're always in the same circuit, and you, it, it's a never-ending story. They will get big, 
but then the, 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 something will happen and the, the, the bag will become stronger, they become weaker, and it goes on and on and on. If we want to really be effective, and I'm talking not talking about what you spell, I'm not saying good or bad or bad or worse. If we want to be effective, we have to rise above, assume a meta perspective, meaning we look at the dynamic from above, and we transcend judgment, and then we go into really understanding. We then we go into comprehending. Then we see that, <clears throat> I give an example. <clears throat> I, I know that victim, being in victim mode, mode is more of a mindset than anything else. I used to, as I said, be um, the victim of uh, burglary, uh, um, fights and all this. And I could see that it, it, it uh, in my mindset were creating it. I don't know if it happens to you or if you know people that have had that mindset. So until I, I, I questioned that, I, could, I was in the loop on the level one, so to speak, circle. But then I assumed what I call a meta perspective. I could see that I was playing a part in my mind that was polarizing something else and I was attracting the, the, what I call perpetrators. And when I understood that, I could see that who I was calling perpetrators, they were reacting to some kind of energy of anger that I was putting out. You see, so the victim, in a very unconscious way, could be regarded as being the perpetrators. Because, as I was saying before, normally what we call, who we call the perpetrator is actually more a, of a victim that the victim itself that we see in that act. So the victim is in victim mode, is judgmental, maybe very latently and unconsciously, but the perpetrator is very weak. He had a very, very precarious upbringing and is sensitive. You know, people that they, they rebel, or people that they, they commit uh, atrocious crimes, Normally, but we all are, but normally they're very, 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 very sensitive people. They're very, very sensitive souls. And what happened? I, I even get goosebumps when I talk about this because this is important. We have to realize that if we want to stop it. We are talking about people that they have suffered so much, that they're such a pure soul at, at some level that they cannot... Um, stand strong because of their family or their sensitiveness, stand strong in, in such an environment, in such a cultural and economic and, and political, whatever system where they grew up, that the only way that they have, to su they have the only strategy for survival and the only strategy to get love is to do something that we wouldn't even dream about. It's almost as if the kid, some kids, they grow up in family where nobody looks at them. Uh, and so they're so ignored that the kid would do anything to get attention and love because they need it. So what's, what does the kid start doing? Break something. Shout. Okay? And so they, they're dysfunctional because then the parents, to get them to be quiet, may give, maybe gives them what they need. But they, they, if they're not exposed to a different kind of dynamic... These people, where they grow up, when they become adults, they do the same. Of course, when they were kids, they were just throwing the, the, the glass uh, off the table. When they are adults, they blew up buildings with bombs. Mm. But what is it? It's an act of love. It's saying to the world, I am here. Nobody has ever cared for me. Nobody has ever looked at me. So unless we start, some of us, and we don't need to do much. Oh, my invitation is just, let's start by understanding this and by not reacting like machines and by like, dang, 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 they shouldn't have done this and generate this anger, which is fueling what we wouldn't like to see. Anyway, it's a loop of actual reaction. Yes. Hello, Tonya. Good evening to you. Tonya says, Ciao, Luca. I, I don't understand much of what you're saying, but I, I, I enter and watch the, the live to say hello. Uh, thank you. Ciao to you too. Ciao, Antonia. Uh, Evelyn say it's needed a huge shift of consciousness. Absolutely, Avalo. Yes, it is. 
That is exactly what we are here for. But not just me, by you watching and uh, hopefully, uh, but I don't know how you feel, but it doesn't matter, by you watching and, and hopefully understanding, or maybe you're already absolutely in line with what I'm saying, we are really uh, powering it up powering up and we are we are uniting and we are doing something incredible i i said it before but i say it again and maybe every time i feeling i think it i say thank you very much to uh gaetano and pamela and everybody that invited me here because this is really it's really, it's, it's it's an incredible um process that we are all undergoing because the the meeting of us the meeting in, in, Individually, we can be very powerful, yes, because we are truly tapping into a universal, infinite intelligence. But more of us, oh gosh, we are very, very, very powerful. I was saying, I was a victim of, of my father. He needed, he needed lots of love. I understood and I recognized that. He was a big master for me, teaching this lesson of, teaching this lesson of compassion. Absolutely, Avalo. You're right. When we can really look beyond what appears to be an angry, nasty person that wants to arm us and we can see and look and comprehend and feel. And then when we discern what really is, we understand, we see that it's somebody that, that is doing the best they could. Everybody does the best they could, they can, with the understanding that they have about life and themselves and others. And then, yes, you're right, then we can actually use uh, whatever is happening to our for our own spiritual, emotional, and and and, and inner evolution. And and yes, they are our master. They make uh, they teach us that the biggest teachers to us. Evelyn, totally agree, hundred percent. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to to assist to one of your uh, meetings and lives. Graciela, say uh, hello, Graciela. Mariella, uh, uh, thank you so much, Mariella. Yes, I love this, Mariella. No master, no servant. Absolutely. I truly believe that we are all here to share and there is no one master and there is no one student. As a matter of fact, like victims and perpetrators, a victim is in itself, has got the potential of a master See the, 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 the symmetry, otherwise the master wouldn't, the, sorry, the, the, the victim or the perpetrator wouldn't exist. But it's the same dynamic when we talk about master or servant or student or teacher, you call them what you want. One could not exist without the others. The universe is holographic in nature. We are all playing a universal, fantastic drama. When we realize that, what happens, we can actually um, our attitude, which I believe our attitude is fundamental in any given situation, our attitude can be a little bit lighter. Again, easier said than done, because sometimes we get attached to people's situation or things or whatever, and it's not easy, and all this is like, what? You will forget. All goes out the window. window. But the more we think about this, the more we listen to this this. this uh, subject, the more we practice them, the more we interiorize them, and the more, yes, we realize there's no master, no servant. Um, fantastic. Thank you, Evelyn. Transmit or transform? Yes. I'm not sure what you mean. If you mean it's a statement or a phrase, but trans I love it. Trans let me transmit or transform. Yes. Both very powerful words, because we do transmit I'll just tell you what, I, what the, these two words evoke in me. I don't know what you meant, but you can write it down. We don't have much time. I don't know if we can get to it. But if you write anything, any of you, I, after the live, after the hour, I will, I will answer. Yes, we are always, I believe we are actually uh, receivers and transmitters of, of thoughts or emotions or vibration or information. We know now the energy is made of light and information. And yes, and it transform. We're always, we are, it, we are transformers. We transform ourselves, we transform others, and we cannot not transform ourselves and not transform others. We are always influencing, 
conscious or unconsciously, directly or indirectly, others and everything actually, even even physical things. Mariana said, we don't have to go, sorry, we don't have to get down into vicious circles. Do you agree? I do agree totally, we don't. There's a, there's a quite an unconscious but very ingrained belief in us, still, very old school, that yes, no pain, no gain. Bananas to it, literally bananas. I, what I do believe though, okay, then again, I again I think it's all a matter of what you believe it's your truth. So I'm a big respectful of if what somebody believes something, that's the truth, that's the reality. Because mine is not, it's just a different perspective. But I do believe that, yeah, you're right, we don't need to suffer. Uh, okay, maybe you, you may, it may help you to have suffered at least maybe once so you know because it's true if you've never suffered there is i don't think life is a school i don't think we have to learn anything but maybe we have to re learn or remember remember we know everything who we truly are so yes if you never suffered maybe you don't know what suffering is and maybe you you can't really relate to somebody that's suffering although it's enough to suffer once it's stored in our memory and i know that i've been there i I've, I've worn that 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 outfit I don't need to wear it anymore. But what we think, because we believe in no pain, no gain, we believe that hardship and struggle is the way of life. Otherwise, life wouldn't exist, which is, I think, is bananas. <laughs> Do you know? And so we think, oh, I have to suffer again. I'm too happy. Well, you go ahead. I would live something else. Uh, Buddha view, yeah, he knew something about it. <clears throat> Evelyn, be witness. Yes. Ah, yes. Thank you. Transmit and transform. Thank you, Evelyn. Yes. Now you make me think of what do we do when somebody is in the first phase of being a victim, is in the trauma phase? Yes, absolutely, Evelyn. But in any phase, you're right, this is fundamental. To be present, to be the witness. Meaning, even without words, just there, just create a space, a vibrational space where you are there and you observe. So, yes, tra transmitting, so transforming in itself, it's incredible. It's probably, yes, thank you, Evelyn. It's one of the most powerful things we can do. Absolutely. And everything just transforms because we let it be. One of the main principles of transformation is exactly that. If you leave, if you let something do its course, whatever that is, in a space and time contained, and you don't interfere, you just watch and observe it, you love it to death, to death, wow, it goes. Thank you. Everyone say, I feel so much love now here. Thank you. I do too. I do too. Yeah. As I was saying, this is the, the, whatever we are all doing, focusing on, on this subject, is something that normally, globally, we don't do it. What, what do we do? Normally, people, we, we talk about the weather. and we were, But if we talk and understand this, this matter, this subject, I think we can, wow, we can, we can really transform the world around ourselves. Two minutes. But I'd like to... Coherence of heart, coherence of heart, absolutely, yes, totally agree. Hello, Helen, great to see you here. I'm very happy you're here. Evelyn, oh, fantastic. Evelyn said, transmit the, oh, sorry, transmit the victim energy or transform the experience. Yes, transmit the victim energy or transform the experience, yes, yes. I don't know if that's what you mean, but yes, we can choose, some, we can choose to be the victim or after we have, being the victim, we can choose to transform the experience, to see the blessing in disguise. Nowadays, one thing that I always ask myself, one question, sometimes I forget straight away, maybe I get angry, I can discourage, and then when I remember, I and just asking myself this question, transform everything soon, sooner than later. I ask myself, I cannot wait to see what's good is coming out of this. What is the hidden gift? And that shifts my attitude. And then everything transforms. Now, I just would like to thank you all very, very much. I love you all. And the next slide is going to be <coughs> next Wednesday. I, I really hope I get the time right, but I think so. It's next Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. UK time. We are going to be talking about, following all of this, uh, forgiveness and healing. I do believe that every healing is the product of forgiveness, forgiving. Thank you. Nice to share with you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you a lot. Nice to share it with you too. We are literally all one. Ciao.